Hello everyone, Seraphin here, and welcome back for more Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. When I last left you guys, we had just finished up Chapter 17, and we have driven away temporarily the last vest- or I'm not gonna say the last vestiges, but uh, the currently mortal form of the Demon King, but we're moving on. We're heading toward Rouston, which is up where some in here area, but moving on, we're gonna actually stop in Nalaris Peak here, it looks like, for Chapter 18. So we're looking for the prince, or what's left of him at any rate. We have Frelian trackers working for us, which apparently are of exquisite quality. Who would have known? So apparently this mountain is in the heart of Darkling Woods, which, uh, that sounds uh, ominous, to say the least. Scorching heat and sulfur stench. Ooh, lovely. I love those. It's like when you have a really good fart and it just feels warm and smells of sulfur. Anyway, maybe I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Endless numbers of Gorgon eggs. Those sound even better. Or worse. I don't know, are Gorgon eggs worse than a sulfurous fart? Probably. I don't like what's inside Gorgon eggs. Alright, here we go. She just refuses to accept the fact that he's just kind of screwed. Huh. I mean, yeah, that makes sense that they would hold that legend. Who knows if it's actually true, it might just be some way to hype up their own nation. Wow. Telling it like it is over here. It's funny how her personality completely changes when she's, like, you know, being serious, I guess. She's not all, like, hyper and flamboyant and everything anymore. So here we are in a creepy mountain. I don't know why we're inside the mountain necessarily, but... Oh, it's a valley. Interesting how they spell sulfur with a PH. Oh boy, that looked like fun. Who's he? Are you talking about Leon? I assume they're talking about Leon. Alright, anyway. So, what are these Gorgon Eggs? Well, that's what these things are, scattered all around the map here, and there's a lot of them. Uh, these eggs you see are, do not have full health when they spawn on the map. That is because they slowly heal over time. And when they fully heal, they will emerge into a fully grown Gorgon, which is this sucker right here. These things are nasty, and I don't like them very much. Why do I not like them very much? Because they have this garbage. Uh, yep, they have a... I'm going to say, for lack of a better term, tome. It's not actually a tome, but it is and it isn't. Uh, it doesn't hurt you, but it turns you to stone. And that's bad, because when you're turned to stone, you can't move, you can't act, you can't fight, and everything that attacks you gains a very large critical hit bonus against you. So it just turns you into, uh, basically, a completely defenseless sack of meat. And a very vulnerable, lifeless sack of meat. At any rate, uh, it does shake off after a while, and you can remove it with a restore staff, but getting hit by that sucks, so we're going to hopefully avoid that. And then they also have their just default dark magic called Demon Surge. This is fairly potent magic, too, so we're going to be wanting to clear these guys out as quickly as we can. And of course, they brought moguls along with them for the ride, so even more dark magic. Uh, people who could, with high resistance 
are going to be invaluable here. So, uh, Lara Shell is going to have her chance to shine. No pun intended. Uh, there's also some gargoyles here. Now, of course, everything flies. These gargoyles, these gorgons, I guess they don't fly. But they are not as impeded by terrain as other things. The moguls, of course, fly. Gargoyles fly. So, yeah, fun, fun. Actually, what I didn't check... Is there anything worth stealing on this here map? I don't think there is. And, of course, these gargoyles look like they have poison lances, which are super fun. Oh, Shadow Shot. This is even better. This is long-range dark magic. Who has that? This one does up here. Not a fan of that nonsensicalness. And then, of course, we have the boss Gorgon way up here in the corner, who is no doubt going to be a major pain in my backside. Jeez, those are ridiculously good stats. All right, anyway. So if we can kill the eggs before they hatch, then nothing bad happens. If we don't make it to them in time, they will hatch, and then the Gorgons will go rampage on us. I'm not sure how often they hatch. I think they get 5 or 10 hit points back when they heal, quote-unquote. And then, of course, we have these tiles that return from Blazing Sword. You may remember these in the chapter where Elwood was on his quest to retrieve Durandal. These tiles that are, like, glowing, uh, if you stand on these, they're a fire trap, and they will hurt you for 10 damage. Flat. No resistance or defense will save you from that. Thankfully, though, they are indiscriminate. Enemies that stand on them will also be hurt, but they heal the Gorgon Eggs. So, yeah, there's that. Not that it matters, because I don't think the Gorgon Eggs are currently situated on top of any of them, but that's not here, neither here nor there. Anyway, let's go ahead and pick our party, shall we? Nothing to steal, so we don't need Rennick. And we can bring... Let's bring Garrick with us. That sounds like fun. We have, He hasn't had a good workout in a while. Either that or Roz, I suppose. Ah, we'll bring Garrick. Um, I had a, I keep forgetting that I have a basically a really full party and I can't bring everybody now. But I think we're gonna go and stick with what we've got here. This seems to be the best bet. So we're gonna get Molder to promotion tier definitely this chapter. We'll see how he turns out. If he's not worth it, we're just gonna leave him behind. Unfortunately, I need to make room for other people. So let's go ahead and put Gilliam right in front, as he always should be. Slowly flanked, or slowly flanked, but uh, flanked on the side here by Mr. Garrick. We have a lot of mounted people. A lot of mounted and a lot of flying people, which, you know what, I'm okay with, because that's better maneuverability. I did give Tethys the Swift Soul, so now she can move two extra spaces. That'll be handy, especially for a very large and narrow winding map like this. And we'll go ahead and put loot near the front. We don't need to have Boulder right up front either, but that's okay. And we'll have Lara Shell near the back simply because she can move very fast. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and dive right into this nonsensicalness. This is not a terribly difficult chapter, so it's just a route chapter. And honestly, these Gorgon Eggs are... I'm probably putting a little more emphasis on how bad they are than they deserve. They really aren't all that difficult to handle, if I'm being totally honest, so... Go ahead and move Gilliam up and get Tethys to let him move again. You may be wondering, why am I sending somebody with very low resistance in to deal with res magic-based people? Well, they haven't hatched yet. And the quicker I can kill them, the better. So we're going to send Sir Gilliam to go contend with them. Fun fact, they do have weapon equipped, even though they don't actually qualify as units just yet. I can't even use the status screen to look at them. Which is kind of interesting, if you ask me. Go ahead and send Garrick up here. I had him with the Devil Axe earlier, but I decided that was a really horrible idea. Uh, it worked for me in Blazing Sword when I gave it to Wallace, because he was slow enough that he wouldn't double with the thing. So even if he did end up backfiring and hitting himself, it wouldn't be... You know, he wouldn't end up dying in the process, whereas that is a very real possibility with Garrick. Simply because he is so strong and very fast as well. So it's not really worth the risk, in my opinion. I also gave Loot a body ring so she can wield lightning and thunder without speed loss now, which is cool. We're going to give her the lightning tome, however, since we're dealing with dark magic users on this map. And nami has got her kit all tricked out. I basically re I basically went shopping for everybody. Uh, because I have access to so many different shops now, and I have the, mem or the silver card and I can buy whatever I want at half price, there's no reason not to go shopping, really. So uh, I kind of went and got everybody decked out for equipment. So we shouldn't have any more issues with that. Let's make sure Mulder's in range to actually bury or somebody. 
might as well do it to somebody who doesn't have great resistance in the first place. I also spent most of my stat boosting items. I think I have one energy ring left in case someone needs a little bit of a kick to their damage output. So far everybody seems to be doing okay. Yep, there they go. They heal five hit points when they start. You see that they changed from a very dull gray to like a more fluorescent white color when they're starting to starting to hatch. So when you start seeing them change that, you definitely want to take them down as quickly as you can. Of course, Gillian with a basic iron sword doesn't quite have the power to punch through this gargoyle. And here comes the shadow shot, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to hurt. Have I mentioned how much I hate these stupid gorgons? Ow. Okay, well, I think we're going to need to barrier up Mr. Gilliam out of necessity here. I also need to get up to that stupid Shadow Shot Gorg as quickly as possible. And they have five uses of that nonsense, too, so it's not like they can... It's not like a one-time thing. They get quite a few uses out of that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have Loot heal up Sir Gilliam, I think. Since her magic is sky-freaking-high and a basic heal staff will be enough to get him topped off. That'll do. Dokie. Let's see here. Uh, why don't we have Gilliam take down another egg? Since he's in range to do that. You definitely want to pop the ones that are white over the ones that are still gray and inert. More defense, more luck. Good. That makes sure he gives him some more crit protection. He's about to hit S rank with lances. I might just need to give him a couple swings with that spear to get him there. Uh, let's go ahead and... Who needs to go in there and start dealing some damage? Let Lara Shell do it. I'm going to get her up here as quickly as I can to take care of that stupid Gorgon anyway, so. Uh, we'll have her destroy the egg right here. And actually, the, the Gorgon eggs do give you a fair bit of experience, strangely enough, because they're treated as a fully grown Gorgon, even though they're clearly not able to fight back or anything, which is kind of neat. And Sir Franz here definitely needs a lot more in the way of weapon experience, so we're going to get him rounded out, hopefully, here. He did double, right? Or he's going to double? Yeah, good. Oh, did I give him a lance? I, I gave him a javelin, but he's a really little bit blip away from getting A rank to use that silver lance, so I just let him have it. Uh, Ephraim can run up this way, I think. We're just going to get the whole shooting match up here. There's really no reason to not push forward as fast as you can. If you rush the end boss, then you kind of avoid a lot of the problems that you run into with these stupid Gorgons. What, with their shadow shots and all that fun, stupid nonsense? Mulder might be in a bad way if he gets taken out by that shadow shot. In fact, he's going to be in a problem. Let's see. 29 attack, and he's got 5 resistance. That'll kick him down pretty severely. I mean, he can handle it. He won't die, but... And thankfully, that shadow shot is incredibly heavy, so it's virtually impossible to double with. It doesn't mean you enjoy getting hit by it, naturally. That's a level up for Tethys. More resistance, good, she'll need that. And we're going to go ahead and barrier up Gilliam, like I said I was going to. I think once we get Mulder promoted to a bishop, he'll be a little much better uh, capacity to handle these guys. We're just going to send our flyers down this way, so I don't need to waste time taking this little side path. Actually, they can't fly over that crevice. That's interesting. In that case, we'll just have Cormag fly up here and take out that egg, with a crit, no less. More speed. Speed's always good. And of course, we have the amazing Mistana here. I know I'm kind of clumping up all my guys, and that's unfortunately sort of inevitable when you're dealing with narrow pathways that you can't fly over like this. And there's the Gorgon walking on a flame trap and getting hit. Probably not enjoying that very much. Let's see if we can't get someone in range to take care of that Gorgon. Why, yes we do! We have Ephraim just in range to take care of that. So we'll take down this stupid Gorgon with a javelin to the face. So that's that problem addressed. <laughs> And I think we'll send Lara Shell to deal with that other Gorgon Egg. I like how it turned to face me. Like, it's a, it's a immovable egg. What's it? How? What? Anyway. Magic. Good. Speed and luck. No surprise there. She's going to cap both of those very quickly. 
We got a Mogul here to deal with. Why don't we let Garrick come in and handle that? Now that stone ability that the Gorgons have has a range of three, potentially, rather than just two with a normal tome. So yeah, that's always fun to deal with. Um, I do have a Restore Staff, I believe, around somewhere. I hope so. I actually didn't bother to check if I carried one or not. I didn't think I was going to deal with this so quickly. Okay, we're going to park Cormag right here. I'm going to continue with my initial plan of sending the flyers this way. Uh, Tana can have her Killer Lance, I think. And up here we got a smattering of eggs and stuff, so we'll send Erica up here with La Rochelle. Gilliam will continue forward up the main pathway, and we'll have Loot on station as a healer. Might as well get everybody nice and barriered up, even though some of them need it more than others. Loot certainly doesn't, but you never know. It doesn't hurt to have more resistance. And this is actually going to be the last use of the barrier staff that Mulder is going to need. In fact, we can probably get away with just a regular old heal with him, can't we? Yep, we sure can. So we can actually sell that barrier staff and make recoup, or recoup some of the money we spent on it. That is it, a level 20 Mulder, and he celebrates by giving us magic skill and speed. Fantastic. I am not going to complain about that. And we'll have, uh, we'll have Nami up front since she's capable of handling a magic hit or two. 17 resistance, not too shabby. Goes for Garrick, of course, but Garrick does not care. He just whips this guy straight in his eyeball with an axe. It's kind of hard to miss the eyeball in one of those things, but... It's nevertheless a juicy target. This is going to be a fairly short chapter. I'm probably going to get it done in a single episode, so... Uh, let's have Cormag fly down here and take care of that egg. And then we'll have Tana swoop in and take care of the other one. Always fun. Alright, that's pretty much this whole area cleared out here. Uh, we're going to have Nami move in and disable this here Gorgon, because I don't need anybody stoning me to death. I should be able to hit her with a longbow. Yep, and that'll do it. She does not have the opportunity to retaliate. I don't think you can retaliate with stone ability, even if it's equipped. Simply because it's treated as like a long-range ability sort of deal. So that's that out of the way. Don't need to deal with that. This egg is going to hatch in a couple of turns. we got some time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send Ephraim to take out some more eggs. Just steal Lansom straight in the face. Here's the thing, like, you're seeing how strong my party is right now with fully promoted units. I know it's a little late in the game, but I didn't do any grinding at all, and I'm still in a very, very good position in terms of power. If you had done any grinding, it would have been a little overkill, in my opinion. Which is why I don't think it's an, it's not necessary at all to do grinding. Uh, even in hard mode, this simply would not have been enough of a challenge to warrant spending time after time in the tower just getting all your experience up. So... Just the, that's most of the reason. Most of the reason why I didn't bother to do it. Also because it was a bit of a slog, and none of you want to see that. So let's go ahead and get Boulder the Boulder finally promoted here. And uh, we had the option to make him a bishop or a sage, since he is a male priest and not a female cleric. If, uh, Ven or for example, Natasha, if we promote her, she'll be a, either a bishop or a Valkyrie, not a sage. Why that is, I don't know. There's no reason to have to not have female sages. We have loot, for example, but for whatever reason, the clerics have a slightly different promotion tree than their male counterparts. So, we already know what sages are like. They're great. That being said, I don't know that Mulder's quite prepared to, to adequately handle using anima magic and whatnot. And plus, we really want a bishop because they have the amazing slayer skill. What is the slayer skill? Well... That basically means every attack that the bishop uses, which is going to be light magic from here on out, is super effective against monsters. Yeah, that's amazing. So even though Mulder doesn't have the highest magic and he's using the lowest level of light tomes, he's still going to absolutely slaughter everything that isn't human. And that is incredibly valuable. Not only that, but he'll retain his very high staff rank. And he's going to be very quick. He's got very high speed already and his constitution's going to be even higher. So we're going to go with Bishop Mulder here. Most certainly. It's 
about bloody time. And he gets a nice boost to most, or some of his stats, not all of them, I guess. But he can now use light magic. Loving that. Let's see how we're looking here. Very happy with how his magic skill and speed turned out. 11 defense is not too shabby for a bishop either. His resistance and luck, however, are a problem. Uh, you'll see that bishops have a cap for resistance of 30, and he's not even a third of the way there. Uh, and his luck is also abysmal. Sadly, I don't have any more goddess icons to give him. I'll probably just need to slap the hoplon guard on him to make sure he doesn't get critical hit. Which I can do. It's not a big deal. However, con of 11, uh, I do believe that allows him to use the divine tome which is very powerful light magic without any speed loss. And that is fantastic. He does come with D rank in light, so he can't quite use Divine, but he can use Shine. I brought Lightning. I didn't think he'd have D already. I thought it would start about with, uh, light, or starting out with E at the very least, but I guess he's a little more potent than I gave him credit for. That is my bad. Never should have doubted Mulder the Boulder. And this is will serve as a late lesson for you as well, those of you watching this. Speaking of, let's deal with that remaining Gorgon Egg by lightening it in the face. And before I forget, we're going to turn Mulder's animations on for the first time since when we initially got him, since he's now capable of using light magic. Whoops, I just turned all the animations off. That's not what we want. There we go. We'll move Franz up here as backup, just in case. This map is going very quick, so yeah, we're not going to be here for very long. This silly little gargoyle thinks he's going to hurt La Rochelle, and he is sorely mistaken as she crits him. I love the whole summoning the magic spark from the palm of their hands sort of deal. It looks really cool. That's the same animation that Valkyries had in Blazing Sword. Uh, that being said, you'll note that uh, in Blazing Sword, Valkyries actually used anima, not light. But that animation is wicked cool, and I'm happy that they kept it because the Mage Knight animation is different and also dumb. I don't like it at all. And I'm sorry to those of you who are a fan of Mage Knights, I am not. Let's go ahead and deal with Mr. Mogal here. Because nobody stops Tana because she's a freaking wrecking ball at this point. I did give her that Draco shield that we stole, by the way, so she is now adequately protected against both physical and magical threats. Not completely, but enough that they're not really going to put a big dent in her. And that's fine, because she's got really good HP, too. So let's go ahead and mop up these Gorgon eggs. We'll do it with Molder right here. And I'll have Naimi use the longbow on the other one. That's already going to be another level up for him, right off the bat. More magic, not bad. Just longbow that one in the face. It's going to be level 2 for Miss Nami. She gets defense. Cool. Moving Gilliam up. Um, let's check the range on this boss, because I don't know if it moves or not, if I'm being totally honest with you guys. But we'll go ahead and give it a couple of targets to hit at, I guess. Draw it out, so to speak. Because if we can do that, we can end this that much quicker. Although we do need to kill all the eggs, because they count as enemies. So we will send... Ephraim and Larachelle up to deal with these eggs. In fact, I think she can reach the very back one there, almost. And we will have Erica around just in case, although we probably won't be needing her. Speed and resistance, I love it. And she's at 30 HP, not bad. I uh, used the angelic robe on Naomi, by the way, because she was... Second, she was tied for second lowest HP amongst my entire crew. But the other two people were both magic squishy people. Oh, but. Okay, well, Garrick's been turned to stone. That's awesome. So we won't be using him for the remainder of the map because uh, I don't think I have a restore staff with me. It's fine, I just need to clear out everything else and he'll be alright. He's not dead or anything, and of course the Gorgon walked into a freaking flame tile, so... Stupid boss Gorgon. Why don't we have Mulder deal with that, just to teach them a lesson? Oh, we can retaliate with the Stone Tome. Would you look at that? You see, even with as high of resistance as that thing has, I'm still doing 12 damage with a basic Lightning Tome. How amazing is that? And I have a 10% crit chance, too, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? 
see if Mulder's up to the task here. Well, not quite. Well, he has another chance. Assuming he doesn't get turned to stone also. So, yeah, he's also been turned to stone. Awesome. Well, that's cool. So I was mistaken earlier, they definitely can counterattack with that stone thing. Uh, it's really freaking irritating, and I hate it. Only got one use of it left, I suppose, but... No, there's five! I thought there was only three. That is... Wow. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Alright, well... Let's uh, deal with this nonsense. I'm just gonna spear this thing through the face and get S-rank and lances with Gilliam. Sayonara, sucker. That'll be a pretty good level up for Gilliam, I think. Oh yeah, speed and resistance? Sign me the heck up. Alright, so that Mogul might be an issue. We're gonna, we're gonna want to deal with that before he goes after Mulder. Because, unfortunately, when you're petrified, you, as I mentioned earlier, you take a lot more threat from critical hits. And Mulder's luck is awful. So, yeah. We'll just have Ephraim clean up this one. And I'll send Erica to go take out that Mogul. Before he has a chance to do anything horrible. Just inside my range. Well, Iron Sword should be fine. I did give Ephraim and Erica their signature weapons, the Sigmund and Sigline, just in case. They're both amazing. They both give them plus five strength, on top of them being absurdly powerful weapons. And they're super effective against monsters. So, if we didn't already think this map was a cakewalk, <laughs> now it's even more so. So, just some eggs left, and then we'll be done. I don't think there's anything in the way of reinforcements simply because they're monsters, and that doesn't make any sense, so... I'll send Franz up here. That one shouldn't hatch before I get to it. Um, I don't want to step on these flame tiles, so I'm just going to be a little careful here. I'll walk Tethys all the way through. And who's left? La Rochelle can take out another egg. Uh, which one is more inclined? Well, I guess they're both equal. Take out the furthest away one. That just leaves a couple of eggs. Four, to be specific. And they're all starting to pop, but that's okay, because they're about to be cleaned up. So, Larachelle will finish off this one. And get herself to level five already, I think? Yeah. Skill and resistance, alright. Yeah, she's... Oh, man, it's so good. It's so good. Okie doke. Let's go ahead and get... Franz up here to this egg. I'll have him bury a javelin in it so he gets to A rank in lances. Did Gilliam level up to S rank? I don't remember. I'll have to look. Alright, there we go. Looking good, Franz. There we go. A rank in lances for Franz. Gilliam did not yet reach S rank. Why don't we go ahead and deliver that to him thusly? As he gets a final crit there. Still not enough, huh? That's irksome. I guess we'll have Naimi do the finishing touches here. Or I can have Franz do it. We got one last little egg to deal with, and then we are out of here. In fact, I'm going to have him do it with a sword. Alright, so that's that. All the Gorgons have been dealt with, and there's Leon again. Looking a little more normal than he did last time, but still not himself, obviously. Boy, don't split the party! Everyone knows that. Oh, this is gonna be bad. No, don't do it. Why do you not listen when people tell you things? She's so naive. I don't... That's the one thing I don't like about Erica. She's just... She's naive to the point of stupid. Like, come on. You, you can't honestly believe this is real. She's like the one of the people that would die first in a horror movie. You, you would trust Leon, but he's not here. 
And of course, he immediately reverts to his evil self. Uh, Adder. It's almost like you knew that because he, not only did Larishil tell you that, but he himself told you that. Oh, for the love of... Even the power of a sacred stone can craft something for nothing. I'm thinking it meant to say cannot craft something for nothing. So that's fun. Typos. Gotta love those. This guy sounds very human for being an ancient evil deity or something. And that's him shattering the fourth of the five stones. It's kind of strange that he's able, even able to carry the thing. You'd think that would be like... He would be, like, repelled by it. But maybe him inhabiting a human body is preventing that. I'm not going to go into theory crafting on it or anything, but... Wow. Alright, so he's beyond sadistic, but what do you expect? Erica looks very upset. All that effort with them having those bracelets or those bracelets to protect their sacred stone, and she just went and threw it all away. Like seriously. You've gotta be kidding me. Oh jeez. Okay, so that was fun. Erica is completely and totally naive. At any rate, so that was chapter 18. Not too, not too difficult. We got through it pretty quick. So we're going to move on to chapter 19 in the next episode, and that one's one of my favorites. You guys are going to love it. Maybe you won't. I'm going to love it. That's the important thing. So at any rate, we'll move on to that next time. So until I see you all then, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. This has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.